in the in the previous lecture of rubber products i was discussing about the different types of accelerators used for the vulcanization or cross linking of different rubbers <coughs> natural rubber or synthetic rubbers there is large number of accelerators available for vulcanization of uh, rubbers accelerators are used for the uh, accelerating the reaction between sulfur and rubber <coughs> these are basically amine derivatives and there are different classes of accelerators <coughs> aldehyde amines guanidines thiazoles sulfenamides dithiocarbamates thiuram sulfides xanthates thiocarbamyl sulfenamides now their speed of reaction with sulfur in order to form cross link bonds sulfur cross link bonds they differ depending on their chemical formula chemical structures etc etc and that is why there lies a proper selection of a suitable accelerator from this list of accelerators that is necessary <coughs> someone is very fast accelerator someone is slow accelerator someone is medium fast accelerator etc now to tell about the accelerators once again little bit we must say about the uh, accelerator characteristics we must know about the accelerator characteristics accelerators character characteristics can be explained with the help of a rheometer trace rheometer trace which makes a plot of torque in pound inch or newton meter in any units versus temperature sorry versus time curing time versus curing time this is curing time basically it is a torque time profile produced by one accelerator in a rubber compound a rubber compound contains rubber say for example 100 parts per 100 per pH or 100 pH uh, parts by weight then filler that may be 50 pH then process oil that may be 10 pH then stabilizer antioxidant or antiogenant that may be <coughs> 1.5 pH uh, cross linking agent sulfur as the cross linking agent that may be present as 1.8 to 2 parts parts by weight then along with sulfur as the cross linking agent that can be accelerators say from that list I have shown CBS as well as MBTS combination or other combinations can also be used. So, say it is one part it is suppose uh, uh, 0.8 part or more than 0.8 part and some um, retarder can also be used. So, this can be a formulation using this accelerator or accelerator combination like this and rubber can be natural rubber a combination of natural rubber with synthetic rubber is rubber or natural rubber polybutyrene rubber or SBR polybutyrene rubber 
So, that depends on the type of product which is to be made. Anyway, I am showing you a general composition or formulation of a rubber product in which the sulfur and accelerators are present. If this accelerator is present, that accelerator decomposes to form some intermediate chemical compounds which form some complex with sulfur that is known as sulfurating complex. That sulfurating complex uh, produces some sulfur atom from the S8 ring of sulfur. That sulfur atom reacts with the diene rubber to form a crosslink bond. During such reaction, what happens? There will be intermolecular linkage between the linear polymer molecules uh, through sulfur atoms like this, either disulfide or polysulfide uh, SX or um, disulfide linkage, etcetera. So, that forms a three dimensional linkage through sulfur like this. So, that cross linking during that cross linking formation, the um, mobility or the flexibility of the segments of in between two cross links are gradually changed with the introduction of more and more sulfur cross link bonds and that actually manifests to the development of torque in the that rheometer. This, this kind of uh, rheogram is produced by a rheometer, rheometer which contains a rotor which, which is uh, connected to a motor oscillating uh, disc uh, motor or oscillating uh, mo uh, rotation a os, uh, oscillating uh, oscillatory rotation is provided by that motor that rotate oscillates at 1 degree or, or 3 degree arc and that rotor is placed in a cavity and over the rotor that rubber compound is placed and two platens of that cavity are closed and that platens are uh, have some heating arrangement at different temperatures. It is a temperature controlled heating arrangement that uh, temperature is maintained at vulcanization temperature of 140 degree Celsius uh, or 160 degree Celsius or even 150 degree Celsius uh, as per the requirement that uh, this temperature is maintained. And as soon as the rubber is placed what happens the rubber compound gets heated and slowly what happens that the viscosity or the torque uh, decreases due to uh, due to increase of temperature, then it becomes parallel to the uh, time axis for some time, then it this torque starts rising. This torque increase or rising torque that happens due to the introduction of this cross link bonds in the uh, in between the rubber molecules and ultimately it gives this kind of profile torque profile with time at say for example, 1 at say 140 degree Celsius temperature. Okay. Now, the, there can be another kind of curve which leads to this type of torque rising instead of uh, becoming parallel to the x axis a uh, curie time axis or it can come down, these different cases can occur. This is, is known as a cure profile or cross linking profile and this is the characteristic of accelerator. Now, this characteristic of accelerator basically these are uh, scotch time and curing rate, cure rate index optimum cure time, this is marching cure this is plateau plateau cure this is reversion and let us see what is scorch time now when uh, it is placed the viscosity or torque decreases due to 
the increase of temperature of the compound as soon as that compound uh, sense this temperature of 140 degree then it becomes parallel to the time axis that means there is no chemical change till this point beyond this point some chemical change has started to occur and then torque starts rising means that compound a is provided some restriction of mobility that means this is torque is, it is oscillated rotor is oscillated so that rotor experiences some opposing force to its towards its oscillation that opposing force towards oscillation is contributed by introduction of these bond this starts uh, here it's uh, this introduction of such cross link bond sulfur uh, intermolecular linkage uh, bond formation uh, starts at this point of time. Then slowly the number of these such bonds uh, intermolecular bond formation increases and uh, this torque uh, goes rising this way. That means, the curing reaction or cross link reaction has started over here and it is increasing at this rate. This is the uh, this can be this this slope of this curve is the cure rate the slope of the cure rate can be obtained from the slope of this torque versus time these two parameters the ratio of these two parameters gives the cure rate index. Now, the time required now the, the, this is the maximum cure for this particular plateau effect if we say this is the maximum torque maximum torque. Okay. So, uh, time required to achieve 2 percent of the maximum torque say T 2 is known as scorch time T 2 T 2 is the scorch time time required to achieve 2 percent of the maximum torque. Now, there can be T 5 also there can be T 3 T 4 that means, the time required to 2 percent of the torque maximum torque time required to achieve uh, 5 percent of the maximum torque or 3 percent of the maximum torque or 4 percent of the maximum torque that is known as the scorch time. That scorch time information can be available from this cure curve that means, a uh, rheometer profile or um, cure profile obtained from a rheometer. Uh, now, th that information is necessary because that scorch time gives a scorch safety indication. What is scorching? Scorching is premature, scorching is premature vulcanization. What is that premature vulcanization? Now, because this rubber compound is prepared by mixing uh, with filler stabilizer, process aids, other things and sulfur accelerator etcetera. Now, during compounding the compound temperature rises to uh, beyond 70 80 degree Celsius. So, the compound should not start curing during such compounding not only that after compounding that rubber compounding compound is used for fabrication of sub, some uh, uh, so, to give, to give a shape of that product say uh, making a tire uh, product or making a tube or making any profile. So, that is that passes through some um, uh, machineries say uh, extruder machine or curing mold uh, curing press etcetera. So, during that period the compound should not start any premature cross linking that means, the temperature rises. So, it should remain on cross link that uh, at that temperature during processing and fabrication that is known as scorch uh, uh, scorching. If that reaction starts uh, there during uh, fabrication that is known as scorching or premature vulcanization starts over there that should be prevented you know to get that information. The scorch time information is very much important that means, at this high temperature of 150 or 160 this T 2 value 
gives an indication that till 150 degree Celsius only if even if some reaction starts only 2 percent um, of this maximum torque can uh, 2 percent of the cross link can occur or 1 percent of the cross link can occur or no cross link can work occur. So, this T 2 this say T 2 can be over here and optimum cure time is known as T 90 that means, the uh, time required to achieve 90 percent of maximum torque 90 percent of maximum torque say M H T 2 this optimum cure time optimum uh, optimum cure time O C T and uh, scorch time T 2. So, this is 90 percent of maximum torque this is 2 percent of maximum torque M H this is M H. Okay. So, this is one parameter Q, uh, this is one of the accelerator characteristic and the curve can be this curve can rise this way or this can also rise this way this can also rise this way this can also rise this way. So, these are known as the character how it actually this rubber compound starts curing or continues curing that is known as the that is the characteristic of the accelerator. That means, whether there is delayed action accelerator, whether there is slow accelerator, whether there is fast accelerator, whether there is scorchy accelerator those things can be judged from this rheometer profile. If more information is required the reader is referred to some uh, spe special books on rubber, rubber technology or vulcanization or um, uh, science of science and technology of rubber. <coughs> then uh, after this accelerator ac accelerators accelerator modifiers are also <coughs> required in order to help the reaction between accelerator and sulfur. Now, there can be that those are known as accelerator activators. What are these? Now, accelerator activators are a combination of chemical compounds of oxides inorganic oxides and organic acids. Among inorganic oxides there are zinc oxide is the most common in all rubber industries in all rubber products say in tire products the zinc oxide is common ingredient as metal oxide activator or in some cases hydrated lime can be used, lethargy can be used, red lead can be used, magnesium oxide can be used or alkali carbonates can be used and some metal hydroxides can also be used. So, that, that means, basically these are alkaline materials alkaline or, uh, or neutral materials neutral zinc oxide is neutral uh, neutral or alkaline materials along with these compounds any of these compounds some organic acid has to be has to be used. That means, a combination of both metal oxide and organic acid constitute this accelerator activator. <coughs> what happens this metal oxide and organic acid form a salt during the vulcanization reaction within the rubber product. So, a combination of these two form a salt and that salt interacts with the accelerator through chelate complex formation. Then that complex interacts with the sulfur to form a sulfuretic complex and that releases sulfur atoms for making activated sulfur atoms energetic sulfur atoms that produces cross link between the uh, rubber molecules. Other than metal oxides alkaline substances like ammonia diethanol triethanol diethanol or triethanol amine or amine salts or reclaimed rubber can also be used. One thing should be known from here at this point I must refer that is uh, the vulcanization reaction
favorably occurs uh, favorable is favorable at alkaline pH of the rubber compound. So, such alkaline pH is developed or maintained through the use of this alkaline substances. Although organic acids are used, since that forms with forms uh, salt with this thing that does not cannot reduce because that cannot ionize. So, these um, uh, cannot decrease the pH. So, in order to increase the curing rate vulcanization rate alkaline substances are preferable. So, ammonia diethanol or triethanolamine or amine salts or even reclaimed rubber which is alkaline that can uh, increase the curing reaction rate vulcanization rate. So, we have discussed about the accelerators accelerator modifiers that means accelerator activators. Then there is another class of compound in the rubber product used which are known as retarders. Retarders or they are sometimes told uh, as PVI, PVI basically this PVI is pre vulcanization inhibitor. I was talking about the scorching reaction before final shaping and vulcanization. The scorching or premature vulcanization should not occur during rubber compound formation as well as during fabrication and shaping. Now, in order to increase the productivity of a rubber product, sometimes high speed accelerators are used. Means uh, first accelerators are used. Now, those first accelerators what happens they produce a cure profile torque time profile uh, torque time profile like this very fast accelerator that means this this time is very small and this keeps stiff rise of this curing rate then like this uh, small time is required for high productivity that means, vulcanization is complete over here say vulcanization should be completed within 5 minutes. In that case one should use very fast accelerator. Now, if a fast accelerator is used that fast accelerator should be compounded with proper care otherwise that will scorch the rubber compound during compound formation or during the processing or shaping operation during the fabrication operation. But this is little difficult. So, use of first accelerator is restricted there, but one can use provided if this uh, region can be kept safe, even if this first accelerator is used, that is done by the use of a retarder. That means, during compounding compound formation in a mixing mixer say internal Banbury mixer or open mill for uh, proper uh, uh, mixing and dispersion of the ingredients the uh, the, the uh, accelerator and sulfur should not start reaction over there that can be kept uh, dormant provided some retarder is used by the use of some retarder retarder means that will retard the reaction uh, vulcanization reaction that is called or that will inhibit the vulcanization reaction that is called pre vulcanization inhibitor. Compounds like N cyclohexyl thiothalamide, N cyclohexyl thiothalamide or even thalic anhydride acidic in nature. I told you that acidic compound uh, acidic compound does not allow the cross linking reaction or uh, slows down the cross linking or vulcanization reaction. So, acidic compound or this thalamide type of compound 
or nitroso diphenylamine these compounds are used as retarders along with very fast accelerator. So, even if fast accelerator is used if this PVI compounds are present that will prevent this vulcanization reaction uh, to occur uh, during the uh, uh, compounding and uh, fabrication uh, period that means, that retarder will provide some scotch safety maintaining the high cure rate, high vulcanization rate. That means, this is maintained, but this can be delayed this way. So, instead of this curve one can get this kind of curve, but if some PVI is used. So, if PVI is there, here is no PVI in this case, no PVI in this case there is no PVI, in this case there is PVI. So, this kind of characteristics can be available if some p vulcanization inhibitor is used. Anti degradants. Now, after this p vulcanization inhibitors I mentioned that stabilizers are used, the stabilizers say that can be antioxidant if the degrading agency is oxygen of oxidative degradation of uh, rubber product. Rubber products are exposed to air which contains oxygen. So, slowly oxygen will degrade the product. So, that degradation should be prevented by some compound by, by the presence of some compound. So, that the life of the rubber product is prolonged those are known as antioxidants. Now, if the degrading agency is ozone, now there are certain regions on the, uh, on the earth surface uh, atmosphere contains ozone higher ozone concentration to prevent the product rubber product from degradation by the presence of ozone in the air in the atmosphere that compound is known as anti ozonant anti ozonant there can be thermal agency so heat stabilizer for uh, thermal degradation So, these are in order to prevent the degradation by different agencies stabilizers are used or anti degradants are used these are in effect called anti degradants. Now, let us have a very quick look into the degradation mechanism of rubber. Now, R H represents a rubber hydrocarbon containing carbon carbon linkage containing unsaturation bonds containing carbon hydrogen bonds. So, that is represent that rubber represents represented by R H. Now, somehow if there is some agency which attacks the rubber that attack can produce some say rubber contents this carbon hydrogen bonds I am showing only one carbon hydrogen bond now that bond can be broken over here forming a free radical free radical that is represented by here as r dot r dot this r dot is produced now this r dot is very active now if it gets gets access to oxygen from the atmosphere that forms a peroxy radical r o o radical so once this is initiated in a rubber product on the surface of a rubber product that uh, gets access to oxygen in the atmosphere that forms peroxy radical. Now, this peroxy radical is far more active than this R radical. Now, this peroxy radical then further abstracts one hydrogen uh, abstracts hydrogen from the uh, other part of the rubber hydrocarbon or from other rubber hydrocarbon molecules 
that form by abstraction of that hydrogen from rubber on this peroxy radical forms hydroperoxide. This is again more reactive, more harmful than this uh, R radical or peroxy radical. So, what happens? It forms hydroperoxide as well as generating one more free radical. So, what happens? There is a chain of reaction which is initiated over here that gradually increase in rate and increase in concentration of these radicals and that leads to breakage of chain, chain scission, chain breakage of polymer chain, rubber chain with free radical formation. If, if this is, uh, if this uh, occurs, then what happens? Ultimately, in a short period of time, the properties or the mechanical properties or any other properties of the rubber product will be uh, redu reduced or that product become useless. Now, this is the basic very simple mechanistic view of degradation of rubber. Now, in order to prevent uh, such uh, prevent that rubber product from such degradation, if some anti degradant of A H type anti degradant this A H represents one anti degradant or it can be antioxidant or it can be anti ozonant etcetera. So, that will that antioxidant anti degradant will react with this free radical produced over here like this R radical by supplying hydrogen from this from its backbone to this to stabilize this R radical that means, it becomes R H that means, R H has been regenerated. So, even if some free radical is created this antioxidant will convert it will revert back to rubber hydrocarbon creating a new radical. Now, this radical is not harmful, this is harmless because this the structure uh, configuration and this uh, formula of these compounds is such that electronic configuration of this uh, compound this radical is such that this free radical is stabilized. That means, this stabilized free radicals is not that reactive as uh, the reactivity of R dot R O dot or R O H etcetera. So, this is not harmful, this is harmless. What happens in the next other cases? So, there are R dot, there are R R O dot peroxy radical that also be uh, taken care of by this anti degradant forming this peroxy uh, 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 hydroperoxide and A dot. And again hydroperoxide will be also be converted to other uh, harmless fragments F R A G A S is wrong over here har harmless fragments. So, these are the, this is the basic uh, mechanistic principle, mechanistic way how this anti degradant functions. <coughs> antioxidants examples of antioxidants are hindered phenols means phenol is this, the formula of phenol is this, formula of phenol is this O H phenol. Now, if it can break over here for being free radical, that free radical will be stabilized with the aromatic phenyl ring. So, phenol is a good antioxidant or anti degradant type of thing. Now, uh, this is hindered, this is hindered means uh, this is connected to some bulky uh, uh, groups, bulky uh, organic groups. So, that kind of phenol derivatives is known as hindered phenols or amino phenol. That means, uh, there can be some amino group and uh, having this amino group NH, NH having lone pair. So, uh, this can also prevent degradation by breaking of uh, here and when it is connected to some uh, such type of phenyl ring. So, that will create stabilized radical. So, amino uh, phenol hydroquinone phosphite this is P H O S P H I T phosphite 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 or diphenylamine or naphthylamine or phenylindiamine. Uh, many antioxidants are available in the market, commercial antioxidants are available in the market and these are commercially used for making commercial rubber products like tires, tubes, hoses, uh, beds uh, different uh, or conveyor beds etcetera. 
these antioxidants any of these antioxidants are used. Now, there is one antioxidant made by Bayer Germany uh, that is Merc mercaptobenz imidazole the formula of this Merc mercaptobenz imidazole is this. Uh, this is market is a very good antioxidant as well as antioxidant mark to MBI or Vulcanox MB. This is uh, in other way it is known as MBI market to benzimidazole or the company's name is Vulcanox MB chemical name is market to benzimidazole. Examples of antioxidants uh, dialkyl phenylene diamine. Here is no scope of detailed description. Uh, if somebody wants to need uh, to know details, uh, he can he is referred to a book uh, by Rabar handbook. By W. Hopman, excellent book on polymer rubber additives, additive chemistry uh, is excellently described, uh, exhaustively described in this book. So, uh, different types of examples apart from these examples, few examples mentioned over here dialkyl phenylin diamine, nickel dibutyl dithiocarbamate, or waxes, even say paraffin wax, microcrystalline wax these are also used as antioxidants because if wax is used as an additive with a rubber compound what happens that is blended with rubber then slowly these wax molecule these are basically hydrocarbon. So, that blooms or, or, or uh, diffuses to the surface and forms a very thin layer of coating uh, over, the rubber, over the rubber product. So, that that is wax is saturated. So, that saturated thin layer coating uh, prevents the ozone entry to the uh, rubber versus managed rubber surface. So, that prevents degradation by the action of ozone. So, other than those uh, 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 additives say processing aids, uh, 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 accelerators, so cross linking agents, accelerators, accelerator modifiers uh, and stabilizers, there are other miscellaneous additives which are also used for uh, making rubber products. So, these are coloring materials, so, these are pigments or dyes, mostly these are pigments to develop attractive color to bring aesthetic uh, appeal to the rubber product. This can be yellow colored, this can be red colored, this can be brown colored, this can be green colored, this can be blue colored, whatever color is required that can be developed by using uh, coloring material. Sometimes cellular rubber products are used as rubber sponge or, um, or um, uh, soft um, uh, rubber cellular say uh, cellular rubber products are used that can be uh, open cell, cell, cell uh, sponge or closed cell sponge uh, these are made by using some blowing agents. The blowing, blowing agents can be either a gas or some gas generating chemical compound. Flame retardants in order to impart some fire retardancy to the rubber product some flame retardant ingredients are used that can be chlorinated hydrocarbon, that can be chlorinated rubber, that can be uh, some, uh, alu uh, some uh, say alumina trihydrate, alumina trihydrate or some antimonia uh, compounds or some phosphorus compounds or some boron compounds these are used as flame retardants. Some antistatic agents in order to prevent the static charge accumulation over a rubber product surface. So, antistatic agents are used because if static charge is allowed to over, uh, accumulate over a rubber product surface what happens that will attract dust from the air and a always a thick layer of dust uh, will be deposited will remain deposited. To prevent this dust accumulation through uh, static charge development uh, so, uh, if some antistatic compounds are uh, like say quaternary ammonium salts are used these are uh, basically electrolyte type of compounds that helps in dissipation of the static charge which is generated over uh, accumulated over the rubber product. 
Then abrasives for grinding wheels etcetera, grinding surfaces for abrading surface to uh, uh, the, some rubber products, abrading rubber products are available. They are some hard material say carbonanum powder etcetera, these are used as abrasive material ab abrasive additives. Then coupling agents sometimes, uh, sometimes, <coughs> sometimes uh, 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 this your uh, silica fillers are used or inorganic fillers are used inorganic fillers are used now this inorganic fillers Inorganic fillers, say for example, silica, um, silica filler. Now, this is not compatible with hydrocarbon rubber, whereas carbon black, I discussed earlier, carbon black is very good miscible or compatible with uh, uh, this hydrocarbon rubbers. Now, this carbon black can be easily accommodated by rubber and that there can be interaction between the carbon black particle and the rubber molecules. Whereas, silica filler cannot enter into interactive uh, physical anchorage uh, or chemical anchorage uh, to the rubber uh, polymer chain. Uh, in order to use this silica filler as filler, in, silica filler is a reinforcing filler provided a coupling agent is used. What is this coupling agent? Coupling agent will have two parts, one is organic part that means, this uh, your hydrocarbon part and this is a polar part, this is non polar this is polar. So, what will happen this if such type of uh, compound is used with or this uh, this is used with along with silica filler the silica particle will be uh, will be covered by these molecules like this. So, silica particle will be interacted with this polar group of the coupling agent and this rest of the part of this your coupling agent will interact with the polymer chain. So, that way uh, interaction between the silica filler, silica filler, uh, silica filler will be developed through this coupling agent. This is nothing but a mediator or marriage maker. This is known as coupling agent. So, for example, for silica filler say S i 69, this is a basically <coughs> vinyl triethoxy silane. This S i 69, the chemical name of this S i 69 is vinyl triethoxy silane. This trieth vinyl triethoxy silane is used along with the silica filler, then only the silica filler can act as a reinforcing filler in rubber product. <coughs> These are something about miscellaneous additives. Then let us look into the, so I have discussed till now, up till now about the composition of a rubber product and I have explained the basic or fundamental roles of the ingredients or additives used in the rubber product, different types of additives used in the rubber product. Now, next step comes after compounding of such additives with the rubber, next step comes the uh, uh, fabrication and after fabrication giving shape, uh, uh, shape or uh, um, uh, shape of the item uh, or, or manufacture or the uh, formation of the product, then it needs to be vulcanized or cross linked, the product is needs to be cross linked which contains those additives along with the sulphur etcetera etcetera. So, till now 
the vulcanization uh, is not allowed. So, after only this complete shape is given then that is vulcanized or allowed to cross link. <coughs> now, there are various techniques available for uh, vulcanization uh, that batch curing methods are uh, involved what autoclave or steam pan at uh, which uh, provides a temperature of 140 to 160. Then gas curing hot gas is used for curing uh, there can be a chamber which is known as oven where the temperature is maintained where the product can be introduced and slowly that will achieve the temperature of the oven and starts curing. Then hot water for curing or sometimes some cold curing is done uh, by using some chemical compounds. Then other than compression molding say continuous vulcanization methods can be done can be adapted that means product is being uh, fabricated and continuously it enters into a system or device where the product is continuously organized. Say for in case of cable, cable is made through uh, 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 extrusion process and um, that passes through a high pressure steam chamber where the uh, covering rubber covering of the cable uh, gets cured while it uh, uh, enters in between the entering and going out of the uh, that um, chamber heat chamber or steam chamber. So, continuously it is entering and going out during the residence time of that cable within the chamber it starts curing and completes curing then it ultimately uh, goes out of the tunnel. Then there can be hot air tunnel there can be molten salt bath there can be fluidized bed there can be continuous drum cure system there can be also microwave cure that means there can be some microwave chamber. Uh, if that uh, product is introduced in that microwave chamber that will uh, cause curing or vulcanization. Now, let us look into the mechanism of this vulcanization brief mechanism of this vulcanization mechanism of vulcanization is very interesting. In this mechanism of vulcanization you just have a look I described about the accelerators. <coughs> accelerators I mean to say I can show you one representative formula this is the formula of the cyclohexyle ring this is Markov to Bezothiazol ring this is the SN linkage, sulfenamide linkage, this is known as N cyclohexyl benzothiazole sulfenamide. In brief, it is known as CBS. There can be other accelerators. this is MBTS, there can be other accelerators this is actually TETD or if the methyl uh, ethyl groups are replaced by methyl group there can be TMTD, there can be another um, very good accelerator that is this is cure right 18 Thio, this is thio carbamyl sulfonamide okay 
Now, let us have a look into this mechanism. Now, accelerator here, this accelerator can be any of these compounds, any of these compounds. Now, A c here it is written A c, A c represents a part of this structure A c, it can, this can be A c or this can be A c, this can also be A c, accelerator residue, this can be A c, this part can also be A c. Okay. So, this A c accelerator reacts with sulfur forming A c S x A c, this is known as monomeric polysulphide and this monomeric polysulphide reacts with rubber molecule forming that means, this monomeric poly, uh, the, the forming this sulfurated accelerated com, ac, accelerated complex is attached to rubber forming a polymeric polysulphide. And when this polymeric polysulphide containing the sulfur and accelerator fragment interacts with rubber that form a cross link bond S x rubber to rubber. That means, you can have rubber chain, rubber chain you can have S x this kind of linkage. Now, look at this thing, this is an accelerator say uh, this type of uh, uh, this type of chemical compound C B S type of chemical compound. Uh, so, that reacts with M B T, M B T structure is not shown over earlier I have shown. So, that reacts with M B T after breaking over here it forms M B T S and M B T is released over here either this can come over here to form this M B T S, this M B T S reacts with sulfur S I ring forming polysulphide, this polysulphide reacts with rubber to form this kind of uh, linkage, this accelerator moiety, this is sulfur linkage, polysulphide linkage, this is polymer chain and ultimately it reacts with another rubber molecule forming this type of cross link, this is rubber molecule, this is rubber molecule, these two rubber molecules are linked with S x. So, this is a cross linked vulcanizer releasing this M B T. Now, you just look into the network, three dimensional network which is supposed to evolve. Now, while before vulcanization, before vulcanization rubber molecules can be viewed in this entangled uh, uh, or coiled configuration, it is an unvulcanized network you can say. Now, on reaction with sulfur accelerator and accelerator activator all those things what happens? The rubber molecules uh, are interlinked through sulfur as I showed you the uh, mechanism in the previous 2, 3 slides. So, these red dots, red, uh, red dots are actually, red dots are the cross link of vulcanization points or nodal points where the sulfur has interlinked two rubber molecules. So, these are sulfur cross link sites. So, now the more is the number of these sites, more will be the cross link density, less the number of sites less will be the cross link density. More is the cross link density, stiffer will be the rubber product, less the cross link density, uh, softer will be the rubber product. So, this is basically known as vulcanized network. So, depending on the cross link density, the mechanical property of the vulcanized network will be dependent. Having such information, let us look into this Let us look into the effect of such vulcanization or introduction of cross link bonds into uh, the rubber products on the properties. <coughs> now, this shows a schematic uh, variation of the vulcanization properties. So, those properties can be tensile strength, those properties can be um, hardness, those properties can be dynamic properties like fatigue properties that can be modulus so and so with the change in cross link density. Now, you see the static modulus, this tensile strength and modulus all these things which are measured using a dumbbell specimen by applying tensile force that is known as static test. Now, in this static state one can get static modulus as well as tensile strength as well as tear strength 
etcetera and you see with the increase of processing density the static modulus increases, hardness increases, tensile strength increases through a maxima that means after uh, reaching a maxima then it decreases depends if the if there is more processing density it goes beyond some processing density maximum optimum processing density tensile strength decreases whereas toughness also decreases at this crosslink. So, uh, if you look into the crosslink density, this crosslink density can be uh, taken as an indication of the uh, properties uh, level of that particular product, which properties required that uh, this kind of schematic diagram will help to make a proper formulation. Look at the ultimate vulcanized network of the rubber chains. As I mentioned, when sulfur is used for vulcanization of dyne rubbers along with accelerator and accelerator activators, there can be a various type of different type of linkages. Now, this S x represents polysulfide linkage. Sulfur uh, actually this your sulfur uh, remains as S 8 ring. So, that de decomposes to S 8 this or S 7 or S 2 or S 3 or S 4 or S uh, 5 like this. So, that can break into sulfur polysulfides or monosulfides or even sulfur radical or even sulfur radical like this that leads to form polysulfide, disulfide, monosulfide, some cyclic sulfide and cyclic monosulfide, cyclic polysulfide and some sulf, uh, polysulfide accelerator complex. So, this is the nature of the vulcanized, nature of the cross link, then the cross link in the our product. More is the concentration of this linkage, more will be the tensile strength, but poorer will be the aging characteristic. That means, this product will be if there is more concentration of S x, there will be the, the um, uh, life of the product will not be good. Whereas, less of S x more of S 2 and more of S uh, less of this sulfur S x etcetera. So, that will be the excellent or efficient vulcanization vulcanized network, because this cyclic sulfide S x or S uh, or this kind of linkage that goes for wasteful utilization of sulfur this is unrequired this is this is to be avoided. Whereas, these two presence of these two will be very efficient for making a stable as well as strong rubber product. Thank you very much.